Hello, everyone, and welcome to our course on the fundamentals of 2D game engines, where we will effectively create a very minimal, very basic, but functional 2D game engine with C++. My name is Gustavo Patsy. I am full-time faculty in a private university here in London, and I have been teaching computer science and mathematics for quite a while now. And one of the core modules that people ask me to go over, you know, zoom in so they understand the mechanics and what goes on behind the scenes of game engines, right? I think it will be wise for us to stop and in this lecture right here, go over some of the learning outcomes, review some of the actual goals and the deliverables that we're going to be producing at the end of this module. So the first thing that I want to discuss is we are going to take a look at the idea of game engine architecture, right? So what are the design patterns that people use to create game engines? It's not simply about creating a game, right? It would be very simple to go start drawing some of the PNG textures, moving them around and call it a day. That is not the end goal, right? We want to understand what are the design patterns, what are the programming techniques that people use whenever we want to decouple these ideas, right? We have a game engine, and then we use that game engine to produce a game, and then we use the same game engine to produce another different game, right? So that is the whole idea. I want you to quickly discuss who this course is for, right? So A is this course for me. If you ever open a popular free game engine, right? So if you ever played around with things like Unity or Unreal or um, Godot, right? So if you ever kind of played around and got your feet wet with these game engines, if you have some understanding of what a game object is, if you have some understanding of how you move things around, you know, these 3D models, this type of things, if you ever played around with these things, and if you ever try to script something, right? So if you have Unity, for example, Unity has its own scripting language. So you can use this scripting language to move objects around, to check for collisions and things like that. If you ever did this, then we are in good shape and you have all the prerequisites that you need to take this module. Before I move forward, let me just look at some of the deliverables that we're gonna have with this course, right? Because in order for us to understand all these ideas that underpin game engines, you know, all the architecture, the design patterns, the programming techniques that we use to create game engines, I think it's a good idea for us to create a game while we are at it, right? So we are going to create this very simple, this is the theme of our game, right? We're gonna have a little player that moves around a map, we have enemies, we have projectiles, we have the whole idea of physics, movement, collision detection, also, scripting abilities, right? Because I want to embed Lua scripting so your users, your level designers, they can go and change a little bit of the behavior just using the Lua language, right? So this is also one of the objectives of our game. So this is going to be kind of the final deliverable that we're gonna create. This is the end goal of our course. But I want to stress again, we are not here only to create this game. Right? This is not the only final game that we're going to end up with. We are going to end up with a minimal but functional game engine because if we want, we can use our game engine to basically just change the images, change the movement, change the logic, and create a similar but different game. Right? So we are not going to end up only with the final game at the end of this course. We are going to end up with a game engine to go and be very productive whenever we want to go and quickly create a prototype, change the behavior, change the movement, and kind of place different things in our screen. Okay, so this is the final deliverable of our course, a game engine. Right, so I want to use also Lua to define in an external file the positions, what is the angle of the projectile that the enemy is shooting? Uh, can we give some, can we define some Lua functions to define what is the trajectory of the projectile if we want? So we have all this Lua scripting abilities as well. This is one of the goals of our course, right? So not only having the C++ game engine right here, we're going to read configuration files, we're going to read behavior logic from a Lua scripting file, right? With all these Lua abilities that uh, the scripting language brings to the table. All right, so let's go over the learning outcomes, right? So what are the topics, what are the, what is the scope of our module? This is it, right? We will create effectively a simple, very minimal, basic, but simple 
2D game engine from scratch. Whenever I say from scratch, if you ever took a course with me, uh, you know that when I say from scratch, it is from scratch, right? We're going to open a code editor, we're going to compile everything by hand, we're going to start int main, and we're going to start rendering things from there. We are going to effectively try to learn the fundamentals, right? Everything that underpins these ideas of game engine architecture and also some important game design patterns, right? There are several design patterns whenever people are creating games, things like event systems, logging, their state, uh, game states. So there are several game design patterns and the idea of game engine architecture. These are the things that I'm going to focus, right? There's a lot of theory, but I'm going to mix theory with actual application so we can see these things on the screen. And for that, we are going to use modern C++. And I was a little bit conflicted with that idea. Should I use vanilla C++ or should I use modern C++? I decided that it is important for every student to understand these modern ideas of C++, right? So there are several important things like smart pointers, these ideas of templates, generics. So there are several things that we're going to learn while we are learning how to create our game engine. But I will try to do my best for us to not lose track and not to overwhelm you with all this modern C++ syntax, right? So everything that we write, I'm going to stop for a moment and we're going to understand how does templates and generics work with C++? How do we understand this object-oriented programming things and how does C++ work with these things? So I know that most students, they come from a different programming language, right? Several students come from C Sharp, several students come from JavaScript, Java, Python, you name it. It doesn't matter, right? We are going to stop, zoom in, and understand all these modern C++ details, the syntax, the grammar, right? The law of C++, so we really understand how we can use the most of C++ in order to create our game engine. Also, not simply C++, we need some dependencies, right? We need to install a couple of external libraries to help us to display textures, help us to do some mathematic calculations, scripting abilities. So you will see, we are going to use SDL, right? So I'm going to use SDL for us to display graphics, to handle uh, hardware communication, sound. I'm going to use GLM to handle mathematics, to work with vector, matrices, quaternions. This one right here, super important. I'm going to use Lua. Lua is one of my favorite scripting languages, right? And it's very easy to embed Lua with C++. So we're going to use Lua to give these scripting abilities to our game engine. And of course, in order to debug and see a couple of important elements of our game, I'm going to use uh, I'm GUI, right? So I'm GUI is a very easy GUI library that we can just create windows, display elements of the GUI, right? Some of the user interface details. So dear, I'm GUI, I'm going to use it just for debug purposes, right? So we can uh, see a logging on the screen, we can see the entities, we can kind of change things around. So I think this is the technology stack that we're going to use, right? I think by the end, we're going to use all these things. I'm going to teach you very soon how to go, install all, the, all these things, create, configure the project. It's going to be a fun ride. So let's just look at what we will actually implement, right? So in a very high level view, we're going to create a very simple 2D rendering system, right? So we're going to use SDL, the SDL library to help us with textures, PNG images. So we're going to learn how to render things on the display, 2D, of course. This is the main goal, right? We're going to understand these ideas of game engines with 2D. Nothing stops you from going and changing your rendering system to use a 3D engine, right? So if you want in the future to expand and use OpenGL, DirectX, Vulkan, if you want to use any of these 3D APIs, you can evolve at the end and move to 3D. But this course, this scope is 2D, right? We're going to learn all the fundamentals of 2D game engines, but with 2D. Yeah, of course, we have to create a frame rate independent game loop. So we're going to look at these very fundamental ideas of game engines, right? Things that we usually take for granted. How does a game loop really work, right? How do we keep everything in a loop? How do we display all these frames of animations, right? How do we keep uh, 60 frames per second consistent? All these details, we're going to look at how these things are implemented. We're going to have a little bit of an asset manager, right? So to handle things like texture, images, uh, true type fonts, 
sound file. So we're going to have this idea of an asset manager because we have to load assets, use these assets, and then at the end, destroy them. And here is a big one. We're going to look at something called an entity component system design pattern, right? So the entity component system, you will also hear things like ECS. This is a very popular pattern that uh, several game engines use. Even Unity kind of moved from the classic component base to an ECS-based system. So we're going to create from scratch our own basic, right? Very ad hoc, but basic entity component system. Because I want us to understand how do we organize our entities? How do we organize our components, right? We're going to learn everything. If you don't know what these words are, don't worry. We're going to review. We're going to give an overview of what everything is and how all these pieces kind of play together. We're going to have an event system, right? So no reputable game engine uh, lacks a good event system. We're going to create, again, a very basic event system so we can emit events, right? We can dispatch an event, and then we have several places that are listening to that event. If that event is triggered, then we can go ahead and perform some actions, right? So an event system is something that I thought it was important. Every game engine kind of works with these ideas of events. So this is one of the goals of our implementation, to create an event system, right? Also, a simple logging system. It's nothing too uh, robust. It's just something that in real time we can see game information, right? entity was created, a collision was detected, this type of thing. So we know, right, we have a log of everything that is happening in our game engine. So we have a logging system as well. We're going to create this from scratch. Of course, kind of basic physics, rigid body, collision, we're going to have all these things, you know, vectors. There's a lot of things that go under the idea of physics and movement in a game engine. Uh, 2D and 3D, but I'm going to focus mostly on 2D movement. Um, as you can see here in the background, right, we are going to use this kind of tile set. We're going to have this tile-based map in the background. So we're going to have all these tiles. We're going to kind of place these tiles around and organize them to have a background of our terrain. Right? So this is going to be, we're going to load the map information and also work with these ideas of tiles, right, these tile textures. I want to add at least some UI elements, you know, how do we render text? How do we render, um, how do we display different types of fonts? How do we also use graphical user interface elements? So there are several different details of UI elements that I want to touch. Some of the UI elements we're going to use in our game, right? We, we should be able to display text in our game, but some other elements I'm going to use for debugging purposes, right? So I'm going to use uh, Dear and GUI which is that library that is going to enable us to go and create a window, populate that window with some graphical elements. So this is one of the goals as well. By the end of our implementation, we're going to use some graphical user interface elements, right? Windows, scroll bars, buttons, and etc. And of course, by the end, one of the big ones for me is I want us to embed a scripting language. We're going to embed Lua with our C++ core application. Right, so besides having our C++ core game engine, we will be able to expose Lua scripting abilities to the user. Right? So after you compile your engine, if you want to change the behavior of how the player moves, if you want to change the angle of where um, an enemy is shooting a projectile or a bullet, then you can kind of just go to the Lua script, change a couple of things, and you probably will see that thing reflected in the game. So embedding a scripting language, right? Embedding Lua in a C++ application, this is one of the goals, and this is, will be one of the deliverables of our course. So I think this kind of summarizes where we're going to and what we're going to achieve with our course, right? This is a rendering system, collisions, game loop, ECS, right? The entity component system, this is a big, go of our course to understand how ECS works. Uh, with ECS, we are going to take a look at what data-oriented design is. We have to think about performance. And also, we will understand and take a look at how popular game engines tackle these problems, right? So how does Unity usually tackle these ideas, right? Uh, how does that compare to what we created? 
So this is all part of uh, our module, right? We are going to look at these ideas of data-oriented design, entity component system, events, logs, collision, physics, rigid body, tile maps. There are several things. Trust me, it's going to be a fun ride. We're going to have tons of fun with this course. All right, so let's do this, right? Hopefully you are on board with my plan. Uh, you agree with all the learning outcomes and the step-by-step -step goals that we have for this module. Uh, I think the next logical step is for us to start looking at the technologies, right? So let's just look at the dependencies, the libraries, what is the folder structure that we're going to use for our project. And of course, I want to go and teach you how to install things uh, under Windows. I want to teach you how to install things under a Linux machine. And I also want to teach you how to install things under a macOS machine, right? So we have these three platforms. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use Windows, Linux, or macOS. I'm going to teach you how to configure your project in these three platforms, right? So regardless of the operating system that you use, I'm, uh, there is options, right? Uh, we are going to use the terminal for, for Linux and macOS. But if you use Windows, you can use Visual Studio as well, and you can follow along with our course, no issues, okay? So the next stop is, let's look at the technologies again. Let's look at the uh, project folder structure that we have, and let's look at how to configure our projects and our libraries for Windows, macOS, and the Linux operating system. See you soon.